Hello and welcome to another helping of the Gold and Blue Lunch Report. Dana Holgerson and West Virginia have gone 0 for October thus far, with three losses to three ranked teams. Now comes a bye week before the Mountaineers face a fourth ranked opponent, TCU. The coach trying to figure out what West Virginia can do to stop the slide. You know, the, the only way you improve is just by keep doing the same thing over and over and over again to bear. It becomes second nature and you're not focusing on what to do. You're comfortable with what to do. You know how to do it and you just keep getting better and better at it. It's the only way that you can get better. We got a system that we believe in. Uh, we, we got players that we believe in. Uh, we got coaches that we believe in. We're just going to keep doing it and we're going to keep getting better at it. It's the, it's the only it's the only approach. You know, so I, I don't think what we're doing is the problem. I think we just need to keep doing it and doing it and doing it to the point where it becomes second nature and we're better at it. Okay, we're six games in. We're at the season's halfway point, which is the perfect time for some made-up awards. The envelopes, please. There's a nice way to do that. We start with the offensive MVP. Wendell Smallwood, number four in your program, number two in Big 12 rushing. I remember Jawan Sider gushing over this guy in camp, and all of that has come to fruition. He's averaging 113 per game, 6.7 per carry, and he has accomplished that while facing three of the top five run defenses in the Big 12. Smallwood is seeing holes before they open, and then he's hitting them. The bye week affords him a few extra days to rest his sore ankle before cutting it loose again at TCU. How about the first half award for the biggest hit inbounds? Got to be Carl Joseph decleating D.D. Westbrook. Holy Oklahoma, Batman! PBUs don't come much more vicious than this. Along with 80,000 Sooner boos, still not sure why it wasn't targeting. No flag, no replay, no nothing. Turned out to be one of the last big college hits for Joseph. His WVU career ended just three days later with a knee injury at practice. From the biggest hit inbounds to the biggest hit out of bounds. Game three and Shelton Gibson runs the go route right over a Maryland cheerleader. Pump the brakes, Shelton. Give me a T for trucked. Hope her full cost of attendance covers physical rehab and extra mascara. The award for three yards and a cloud of rubber pellets goes to Russell Shell. West Virginia is running the ball more than ever, but Shell is not reaping the benefits. He doesn't appear as quick or decisive as he was last season, and the drop-off looks even more dramatic when compared to Smallwood's production. Shell's 3.5 yards per carry, shaping up to be a career low. And among his 88 carries this season, only three have gone for 10 or more yards. How about the defensive MVP? Well, hey, it's a first half of the season award, so we can't ignore a guy just because he won't be around for the second half of the season. Carl Joseph had a tremendous opener, caught more Georgia Southern passes than the Georgia Southern receivers did, and his sure tackling surely will be missed. The award for most controversial uniform alteration goes to Nick O'Toole, whose pants keep inching up. At this rate, the NCAA may soon have to enforce some inseam limits. O'Toole told me he wouldn't wear pants at all if he didn't have to, which is another debate altogether. He initially tried rolling up his britches beneath the pads, but when they came unrolled, he began cutting them which didn't sit well with Dana Holgerson. Let's see how this plays out the rest of the way. Could become a thing for the coach as well. And the kick em when they're down award also goes to O'Toole. Up 38-0 on Maryland in the second half, and he used all that leg room to victimize the Terps. All's fair in a border war, right? Well, glimpsing at the latest West Virginia stats, we see O'Toole is averaging a healthy 13 yards per carry about 10 yards more than Russell's show. Hey, we're just clowning, Rush. Please don't stop coming to interviews. The award for best hustle by a defender. Now keep your eyes on Terrell Chestnut at the top of the screen. Well, okay, you can't watch him because he's actually off the screen as this Maryland play develops. But Chestnut won't quit, and Brandon Ross won't see him coming. A surefire touchdown becomes a touchback thanks to replay and the cornerback's tremendous effort. And the award for best hustle by a defender runner-up. I know second place is really first loser, but when you're a 295 pound nose guard and you come a chugging up on the nation's most dangerous wide receiver, we'd better recognize. So here's to you Darian Howard, maybe he should have tried covering Corey Coleman. And 
finally, the award for the best bumper music goes to 